Today's agenda, Nintendo Direct, just came out on September 23rd, 2021. Then we're going to go over quick reviews where I give my thoughts on games that I currently or recently played. Today we're going to go over WarioWare and Tales of Arise. Then Gotcha Time where we do pulls on my brain on Gotcha Games. We're going to talk about World Flipper and Revive Witch for this section. And then Lookout where I'll talk about games that I'm keeping an eye on in this coming weeks or this coming month. Welcome to Game Subs, which stands for Game Supplements. My name is Vincent, people call me Vin. This is used as a supplement for my stream where I give more condensed and concise thoughts of games I played such as gacha games, Nintendo games, and PC games. I enjoy gaming, anime, martial arts, and dancing. I'm also a foodie, but I'm very picky with vegetables. But let's get started with the first section. All right, let's talk about Nintendo Direct. This is a pretty nice game, but it started off with some Monster Hunter Rise. There's the new DLC from Mountain Rise called Sunbreak. That is so separately. I remember using to play a lot of Insect Glaive uh, with the base Monster Hunter Rise. And then I caught up with content and never came back. But this is like a massive expansion like uh, Iceborne. So it might give me a bad game. I don't know. But we'll have to wait for that to come out. <laughs> and then we have Super Mario Party. It looks nice. There's some new maps with the spookiness. Perfect for Halloween. Uh, they have a survival mode, which is kind of like climbing the tower kind of thing, see how far you can go with the mini games. I recently bought regular Mario Party though, because um, when they announced that the Switch was going to get the online board game, I just straight up bought it. So I'm like, oh man, and then uh, this kind of hurts me, it's kind of painful. And then we talk about Voice of Cards, the Island Dragon Roars, and this one, yo. This one was great. I just played a demo. It was awesome. It gave some D&D vibes. It's a card game and an RPG made by Square Enix. I'm very first excited for this. Um, and it's coming out, I believe, on October like 27th. But it's great. It feels like a D&D. It's like a game master. It talks to you. Uh, you move through the map like, like that. Everything is card-based. Even the map, even the menus. Everything's cards. It was, it was awesome. It was fun. Kind of a chill game, so if you do check that out, the demo is out. And then we have Disco Elysium. Um, I'm not really a fan of this game, just because of like the art style and then the gameplay didn't like intrigue me. But I'm pretty sure it could be a fun game for for people. But it wasn't like explosive for me per se. Then it went into Zelda: Age of Calamity. Uh, it's getting an expansion pass, and they have some new science-like DLC characters. They have some new stories, some new stages, and actions for assistant characters. Uh, we didn't get Mario Kart 9, but we did get Chocobo GP. It's pretty much Final Fantasy Kart. Each character had their own ability as well, and you can combine items to get uh, bigger spells because you get these uh, spells from the item capsule, which is like I believe the magic site or whatever I believe it was called. Not sure if there's drifting, if I saw any drifting, but it is coming in 2022, and I am interested in this. I was hoping for Mario Kart 9, but nice alternative. Then we get some news of the Smash character, which is going to be announced in the Smash Direct on October 5th in the morning at 7 a.m. PST. Oh my god. I don't know if I'm going to be up for that, but uh, I'm excited for the new character though. Uh, and I'm just going to skip over to the Animal Crossing. It's also getting a direct sometime in October. No exact date. But finally getting a, hopefully a decent update. I don't know. I've been, I went pretty ham Animal Crossing like a month after it came out. And then I was helping people host turnips. And then I finished my island and I, I kind of just got bored of it and burned out. But we'll see what, they, what they're going to announce. But here we go. This game is coming, and it's Kirby. Kirby in the 3D world. It looks awesome. I want this game very much. The abilities are now translated to 3D. The graphics looks nice. Uh, that one mall scene reminds me of Left 4 Dead. But Kirby and the Forgotten Land is something I very look forward to, and I'm hyped for this. It's coming out on Spring 2022. Mario's Golf Super Rush is getting a second free update. Uh, the game was very intriguing enough for me when I first played it. Um, there is, it's getting two new characters, Koopa Troopa and Ninji, and two new courses. 
And it's going to be available on the day of this direct, actually. <laughs> then they go on and do the Disney game. Uh, you can use your Mi characters there. You go around a Disney world. Apparently, it's, it feels it's a ported version of the Disney game from the 3DS. And then they kind of update the graphics a little bit. And there's also a ported version of the Star Wars game, Old Republic. Uh, I'm not a Star Wars fan, but it's there. Then they went into the Dying Light 2 is getting a cloud version, which apparently requires high-speed internet to play. It's a zombie parkour game, which seems all right. Um, feels kind of H- too HD for the Switch, in my opinion. Uh, it's coming out February 22nd, and there's a demo launching on the same day. And there's also going to be a Dying Light Platinum Edition coming out on October 19th. It just, it just seems okay to me. Here are for the Final Fantasy Tactics fans. But this is called Triangular, no, Triangle Strategy, which gives the Final Fantasy Tactics vibe. So if you enjoyed Final Fantasy Tactics back in the day, and you feel like you want a new Tactics game, here it is. I'm still waiting for Digimon Survive. I don't know when that's coming out, but this game seems fun though. If you're really into Tactics, um, coming March 4th, 2022. Then they show Metroid Dread. I'm still on the fence of whether to get there or not because it's pretty close to Back for Blood. But the narrator gives more narrative on this world of ZDR where Samus is coming to investigate. And there's the AI in her cannon too that helps her out. So the planets break down the four parts with their own respective environment and organisms. And there are some more reports that you can check out on the website. It still looks great. Still on the fence, but... I'm close to getting it. <laughs> then they went to the Nintendo Switch Online, which getting a new expansion pass apparently, where you can get to play N64 games and Sega Genesis games. It's a nice addition, but uh, for myself, I wouldn't pay extra for it. Uh, I didn't see P- Mario Party 64 on the list, unfortunately. Uh, they also introduced new wireless controller for the N64 and Sega Genesis to work with the Switch. About 50 bucks a pop. Something to think about. Then they show a bunch of collections of existing and old games. Uh, it's nice if you want them, but it's not for me. <laughs> At first, I thought there was an Undertale thing that shop popped up right after the collection, but it was a Delta Rune. It's getting a chapter two. I don't know too much about it. It does look interesting, but mind myself, I'm not gonna get it. But if you're one of those fans, I would suggest you take a look. It looks pretty cool. Then they did a quick showcase on some of the games, but the one that stand out, what I was waiting for, was Rune Factory 5. It's finally getting a release date over here, March 22, or 22nd, 2022. I'm looking forward to this. And oh my god, <laughs> you guys, you guys won't believe it, but we're getting a Mario movie. It's going to be animated because Illumination is an animation studio. And they didn't get Charles. The one that actually voiced Mario in the video game as Mario, but he's going to be in Camino, but we're getting Chris Pratt. <laughs> there was a tweet that I saw, apparently it was from May last year, that saying that, oh, the Mario movie isn't going to be voiced by Charles. It's going to be voiced by someone like Chris Pratt. And damn, it, it, it came true. <laughs> they have a lot of iconic actors in here. Uh, it just feels ironically funny. But the movie is planned to release in North America December 21st, 2022. So winter of next year. Then they show Splatoon 3. It has a story mode. It looks and sounds great. It gives a bunch of clips of the different world enemies. Mammalians, I believe is how you pronounce them. There's a new weapons. Like there's this crab robot thing. There's a bow. There's a arm stretch. You can go from... You can hop from side to side like freaking Luffy from One Piece. Right? So, I don't know. It feels great. Uh, a lot of fans will be excited for this, for sure. Uh, I, don't, for myself, don't like playing shooters on console, but there is there. And this one, I can sense a lot of hype for. Bayonetta 3 is finally coming and is announced. It started off with this super thick ka- kaiju monster thing, and then these army people are coming in, and they're getting destroyed. They're getting yeeted out of there. And then here comes a shot on the on the monster's back, There's like a peace sign on there. And then the monster looked around, and there's a bouncing statue that's just pointing at it. Uh, it's like one of those ones that you see in front of police stations. 
and then they, they swung the sword at the statue and then you can see a reflection of Bayonetta and then Bayonetta comes down pummeling it with you know the demon fist she got a hairstyle change and then she, apparently she dances to summon demons and then she also dances to control the demons it's like freaking full of kaiju fights yo but that's that spider scorpion, the spider with the scorpion tail. Oh my god, that's great. But yeah, she got the moves, and she's coming in 2022. But yeah, that's pretty much Nintendo Direct. Quick reviews, where I give my thoughts on games I currently or recently played. I'm going to start with WarioWare. WarioWare is a Wario game full of super small mini games that are silly and wacky, like stopping a kid from dropping their ice cream or plugging up someone's nose. It's about $50 right now in the eShop, and I picked it up randomly when a viewer mentioned it, and I just played it right there and then. The story was surprisingly short. I finished it about half the stream, which is about two to three hours. I recall playing WarioWare back in the day, and it felt a lot longer. I don't know if it's an age thing, but that's what it felt like. The minigames themselves were great, and I, you can play them with different characters, so it's give a variety kind of sense. And my favorite minigame type is under 9 volt. It has references to all the other Nintendo games, which was great. Unfortunately, there is no online multiplayer, but there are other modes you can play with your friends locally, and there is also a ranking system. But for me, personally, I don't think it's worth 50 bucks. But if you do play with your friends and families and kids, it is a fun game to play locally though, so it's still a nice pick. Tales of Arise. Tales of Arise is a standalone installment in the Tales series, it's an action-based anime JRPG, and it's just not a good game. It's a great game, and I went pretty ham in the beginning, but then I had other games to play, so I didn't get to finish it. But I am in the middle of the fourth region. So this talk will have some mild spoilers, like I'm just going to talk about like a specific move and a specific monster. Very specific. But the story is great so far, the interactions with the characters are awesome, and there are like the... WTF moment, there's some emotional moment, and there's some humor. I've been playing this on hard mode with no DLC, so I don't get the extra DLC gold, and I don't get the early OP weapon. And if you didn't know, I like to play unarmed characters, so characters that use their body as weapons, they punch and kick the enemies to the ground or the sky or whatever. Um, so I was hoping to unlock Law, which is the unarmed fighter in this game as soon as possible. However, he appears later in the story, so um, that's the only downside. If you want to play a specific character, you gotta have to like unlock them first through the story. You don't know when that's gonna happen. But uh, one thing that I did notice while I was finding these battles, sometimes there's enemies that are like five grouped up together, and yo, when fighting five of these like casters, <laughs> they they get annoying because then if you do the boost attack of Rinwell to cancel. The, the moves, you can only cancel like a few of them, but the, what if all five of them were casting at the same time. So one thing I did notice is that during the overworld, you can kind of lure some of the groups away, um, but they do have to be far enough away so that when you engage in that one group, it doesn't grab everything else. So there's still a vicinity of your engagement that it does take into account. So be wary of that. So if you have like five in a group, you lure like them away, they all come towards you, but like, two of them or three of them turns around walk back you gotta wait a bit until they get far enough and engage in the two that are kind of still hopefully following you and then you just fight the two and then later you can go fight the three or you can learn more so that's one way to make the hard mode a little bit easier i usually skip stories in some games or most of the games but this game got me enjoying the story so i just let it play all the interaction with voice acting they have japanese voice acting as well but the english voice acting is great so i've been playing that on english voice acting and the animated fight scenes in this game are also super good my favorite move for law because that's the character i use he's the unarmed fighter in this game it's a talent hurricane you can quickly build up combos and it sends you in the air so you can probably dodge something at the end but the only downside is is the combo, right? You can do like a few hits, you'd be stuck in that animation for a while until you finish. Or you got a boosted attack that can cancel that and it gives you iframes, by the way, if you didn't know. And then my also, my favorite combo attack is the Super Flashing Fang with Rinwell and Law. But the line from the combo attack between Kasara and Law is great, which is, I think Kasara was like, I'll stop your movement. 
And then Law will come in and then, I'll stop your life. And then he kicks the the stalagmite that Kisara made. Oh my God, that, that line was great. And I'm going to talk about this one monster. I hate this monster so much. I hate the oozes, okay? It's my like worst enemy and boss. But I will do a more spoiler talk of this game when I actually finish this game. And I'll probably put it in a different thing. But yeah, that's the, just the brief review that I have of this game. All right, gotcha time where you do pulls on my brain on gotcha games. So this game is what I've been streaming pretty currently and a lot now. My main gotcha game is called World Flipper. World Flipper is a pinball gotcha game published by Psy Games. Same publisher for Dragalia Lost. And the story pretty much is the protagonist and the friends going around each world and flipping them pinball style. <laughs> I have two accounts for this game because... If you didn't know, when you join a random boss battle or a mutual friend that's hosting, you don't use stamina. So I have my old account hosting for main account and vice versa. Or when I do on stream, I just host two different rooms and have people join in. Um, so when you rank up, you actually refill your stamina. So if you run out of stamina, you go join rooms, help them out, fight the boss, get EXP. Uh, in turn, you can rank up, you can return to hosts, or you can go do your other stuff. So people are very helpful. They like they don't mind hosting rooms. They, may, they don't mind making ults. Uh, they do have a new update that just came out called Necropopolis, which is like a labyrinth where you can grind and get dream crests for your mana board. And the mana board is pretty much for each character unlocks their passives. Um, I was able to beat the ones I'm only strong against. So on my main account, which at the dark team, I only beat the light one. <laughs> Everything else is like mediocre. I haven't beaten the last level of each one yet. But it's a work in progress. So the way that the teams work is that you have three main units and then you have three support units and you have that go under each one of them. And then you have three weapons that also go each one of them. And you also have a uh, uh, item that you can also equip under the team based on weapon awakenings. And the way that it works during the 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 battle is that when you actually activate the skill by either swiping left, up, or right, depending on which character you want to activate, it will activate the main skill and the support skill, the support character's skill. And the leader skill is only, of course, the leader, this one character, which is like the most left main unit. Then there's the passive for the support unit that also go into account. But only the one that does not say this is has to be a main unit. So the one that don't say that, then it applies to you. Because, of course, there are support units, right? <laughs> and my team, I'm going to talk about my team, my dark team. I'm running the Bell team, right? So Bell works as her skill is she's fired a huge laser. And the less HP she has, the more damage it does. And that's, that's great. It's like a one-hit kill thing, right? She wants to be low HP. Um, on the edge all the time, kind of like it's like an edgy team. And her support unit that I'm using is Falset. I'm hopefully saying that right. Where she takes damage or she deals damage, with, so the max HP you get like less like 10% or 20%, but you get like attack buff or a skill gauge buff. So that's why I have her under Bell. And then as my second main unit, I have Mirror Bell, which lowers her resistance of the enemies near nearby right and also give a bunch of buffs for dark units and then i have sasusu which is pretty much like the super character in this game even though she's a three star super good it gives the leader an attack buff and yeah pretty much gives attack buff pretty much and also increases your skill gauge and skill damage of the party when you use the skill it's super good everyone would like to use her even though she's a three star she was like on every team and then the third main, main unit I have is rebecca she reduces the dart resistance of characters and increases your skill gauge, which is good. So everything's just supporting Bell. And then we have Andy as a support uh, for Rebecca, which also reduced her attack. And then when they have when they have a debuff, you do more damage to them. So that's my team. Uh, I'll go over my Thunder team on my ult some other time. And I'm going to talk about the current banner. So we have Faria, which is the wind healer. We have Sonya, which is like the water five star. So those are the five stars. And we have the four stars. Ram. Ram's super good. It's like DPS four star for Thunder. And we have Nabi, which is the fire four star. Um, as a free-to-play player, I suggest you wait 
because they're not limited, so it's better to just wait for a banner that is limited. It's not a bad banner to pull. Like these units are good, but I I rather you guys just prefer to save for the limit banners. And yeah, that's pretty much it for World Flipper for now. Revive Witch, published by Yostar. Revive Witch is a gacha RPG. It has puzzles and stuff. It gives a lot of Octopath vibes. Close beta just ended, and each level has its own instance where you can like get treasure chests and fight enemies. When you don't fight the enemies in the map, like you somehow avoid them, you actually get some stamina back. Anyways, the plot is that the witch get transferred into this magical world, and then you get these dolls that you can use to help you. These are the units that you pull, by the way, for the gacha. And the battle system is that you get this yellow bar, which I believe is like the magic bar, that accumulates over time, and that allows you to use the skills, which is that uses the energy bar. And then when you use that energy, it also increases the purple bar, which is the chaos bar, or the chaos energy, which you can use for other skills that require the purple energy, or the chaos energy. Uh, mana is technically kind of the currency in here. It's used for everything, to upgrade to uh, ascend to to buy anything <laughs> a lot of the stuff there's also regular gems too which you use for pulls but the in-game currency which is in the premium currency is the mana and the extension is how you uncap your units so you get to like level 40 and then you un you ascend and then you go back to level one but you keep the same stats right but then now you can go to level 50. <laughs> But the ascension mana that I require to ascend, I feel like needs this, a slight nerf because it's quite a lot and it'll take a lot of stamina. There's also equipment that you can wear on your dolls. There's a lot of content. There's like a little town area that you can like build stuff kinda and level them up. There's PVP, there's boss runs, there's a decent amount of story right now in the closed beta. There's also a guild system, but I feel like there needs to be something more. Right now it's just a giant chat room. I can't wait for open beta. And it seems like it's ready to play, to be honest. So hopefully it comes out soon. But let's just go over some of the units to look out for when it's out. Like who to reroll for, in my opinion. There's a rarity system. There's a rare, which is the R. There's the SR, which is super rare. Uh, SSR, which is super, super rare. And then there's UR, which is the ultra rare, which is the highest rank. There's this guardian tank that holds a pillow. Her name is a Fallen. That's the great tank. And there is SSR, which is called Yushpia, I believe. She's like this tan lady that does poison damage. The poison damage can do a lot more damage than some of the URs. So she's, she's one of the Atari participated. And she looks great. Uh, next is Ella, which is a great destroyer. This is, she's a little girl that can transform into a dragon. And obviously, this probably like she's probably like 300 years old or something. <laughs> she does do less damage than Yushpia, but she's more tanky. And the last one that I want to talk about is, is Amanami, I believe that's how you pronounce her name. She's a compeller class. She deals magic damage and lowers the magic resistance on the enemy and also can heal your party. So yeah, those are the ones I kind of want to look look out for if you want to do the rerolls. But yeah, that's, that's Revive Witch. Look out the games I'm keeping an eye for for this coming week and coming month. Metro Dread, still on the fence. Probably going to get it. Probably will get it. Coming out October 8th of this year. And then there's Back for Blood. They had a beta a while back. And I enjoy playing with my friends. Killing zombies. There's also PvP which is super unbalanced. But if you're just here just for the cooperative access to PvE. is a great game. So I pre-order already. It's coming out October 12th of this year. Then it, of course there's Mario Superstars, right? Mario Party Superstars that we mentioned earlier. It's coming out in October. I mentioned it. I feel pain. I feel <laughs> betrayed here. So I'm probably not going to get it. But it looks great. Then there's Super Ball Banana Mania that's coming out like October 5th. I saw a video of Sonic in one of those balls and I'm like, oh man. They also have other characters in there. Kind of pushing me to it. But it doesn't have online multiplayer. But there's online leaderboard and there's local multiplayer. So I'm still considering getting that. But yeah, those are the games I'm kind of looking out for. And feel free to check out my stream, twitch.tv slash Vinsante, V-I-N-S-O-N-T-E. I have all my social stuff there, my Discord links and stuff are there. So you just go there and check it out. Let me know what you're excited for. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this first talk. And with that, later days.